Typically, we don't look at a pond as healthy or unhealthy. Instead, we'll evaluate your pond to see if it can support your fishery's goals. And if it cannot, we'll help you come up with a management plan to get your pond in tip-top shape. Hey there, Samuel Scott here, fisheries biologist at Pond King. Often in my day-to-day -day work, I hear the question, is my pond healthy? But as a biologist, I don't think of a pond as healthy or unhealthy. Instead, I treat each pond as its own ecosystem. And some factors that create this ecosystem are habitat, water quality, and the ecoregion that your pond is in. Using three different analyses, I can test the overall health of your pond, see if it can support your fishery goals. The three analyses are water quality, habitat, and your fish populations in your pond. The first thing to look at is water quality. We only need one bottle of water to do this test, but it is important that you don't fill that bottle with only surface water. Instead, submerge the bottle about six inches below the surface and then fill it. You can bring your sample to us here at Pond King and we can examine it in our lab. Or if you need a more detailed report, you can send it to a lab like the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Soil, Water, and Forage Testing Laboratory. When we do the testing, we test for pH, alkalinity, and total hardness. The ideal range for fish of pH is 6.5 to 9, but alkalinity, or the water's ability to buffer pH swings throughout the course of a day, can impact your pH levels in your pond. This is why we also test for alkalinity. Alkalinity is measured in milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate, and to keep your pH in the correct range, the alkalinity should be between 65 and 150 milligrams per liter calcium carbonate. Total hardness refers to the quantity of divalent ions, calcium, magnesium, and iron, and is measured in milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate also. Total hardness is important because calcium is critical in the formation of bone structures as fish grow. Total hardness of 100 to 250 milligrams per liter calcium carbonate is optimal, and any deviation from this can affect your pH or your alkalinity. You shouldn't be surprised if your numbers are outside of these ranges. We can balance your pond's pH, alkalinity, and total hardness by treating with gypsum or limestone or a combination of both. The next characteristic we will look at is your pond's habitat, both surrounding your pond and in it. First, let's talk about the habitat that it's easiest to see, the habitat around your pond. Controlling and maintaining the vegetation around the edges of your pond, both in and out of the water, is an effective way to keep your pond from filling with sediments or becoming turbid. Along your shoreline and around your pond, it's a great idea to have ample vegetation in order to control erosion. Bermuda is a top choice here in Texas because of its ability to stay submerged underwater for extended periods of time, its fast growing nature, and its ability to live and full sun exposure on those 100 degree days. It is also a good idea to establish aquatic plants that can help slow down the incoming water and allow sediments to settle out of suspension before reaching the main body of water, which would make your water turbid. To prevent turbidity, try planting bulrush or American water willow at the mouths of feeder creeks and streams. And if you have wind-blown banks, you may also want a managed section of sedges and rushes to reduce the effects of wave action eating away at the pond's edge. Now that we've talked about the habitat that's easy to see, let's talk about the habitat that isn't easy to see, and that's the habitat for your fish. All fish require cover at different life stages for different reasons and different seasons. Game fish, like bass, need habitat that offers ambush opportunities. This is important because it allows the game fish to be more effective hunters, expending less energy on the hunt than gained from the resulting meal. To achieve this balance, we recommend covering about 10 to 15 percent of your pond's surface area with some sort of habitat, and it should be appropriate for the water's depth. The last measure of your pond's condition is the fish populations that it contains. The best way to evaluate this is with one of our electrofishing surveys. During an electrofishing survey, a low electrical current is sent throughout the water, attracting and stunning the fish. We collect the fish to assess which species you have and we measure and weigh the fish to determine their condition. Using this data, we can determine with a high degree of accuracy the balance of bait fish to game fish, 
and identify any changes that may be required to maintain that status. We'll also discover any diseases or parasites that may need addressing. By maintaining a well-balanced fish population, growth rates, and recruitment rates of all species, this can lead to greater sustainability and better fishing down the road. While we are always happy to come out and perform these services for you, if that isn't convenient, you can always use the Pond King Do-It-Yourself Pond Management app to help guide you through these and other pond management techniques. If you found this information helpful, you can subscribe to our channel below and leave us a comment in the comment section if you have any questions. Thank you all for joining and we'll see you down at the pond.